this morning. Let's just thank him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are so thankful that we woke up this morning to see a new day, a bright day, a glorious day. We thank you, Father, oh God, for breathing life into us again. You are the air that we breathe. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the covering of your blood. Oh, Father, we adore you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for covering our families. Thank you, Father, for covering our vehicles. Thank you for covering our traveling mercies, oh God. Our going in and our coming, oh Father. You are our protector, and we have experienced it face to face. We thank you, Father, for saving us. We thank you, Father, for redeeming us, Lord. You are the redeemer of time. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy, that you are restoring the years that were lost, that you have restored, oh God, everything that has been lost in our life. We thank you, Father, for multiplying every seed song. We thank you, Father, for giving us more than enough. You are the God of more than enough. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We adore you. Hallelujah. You are great. You are merciful. You have no rival. You have no equal. Lord, you reign forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We adore you this morning. We adore you this morning. Come on. We adore him this morning. Hallelujah. We lift up our voices just to give you glory. We lift up our voice just to give you praise. We offer up, oh God, the sacrifice of praise with the fruit of our lips this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We welcome you into this space, mighty God. Fill the room, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are ready to experience a new thing. You said, oh God, forget the former things. Forget the things of the past, but behold, you are doing a new thing. We are ready to take hold. We are ready to obtain the new thing. We thank you for the new season. We thank you for the new job. We thank you for the new opportunities. We thank you for opening doors. We thank you for closing doors that were never meant to be open. We thank you, Father, for saving us. Oh, God, we thank you for saving our children. We thank you for restoring our minds. We thank you for keeping us in our right mind, God. We thank you for good health. We thank you for healing. You are Jehovah Rapha. You have proven this time and time again. We thank you for healing our feet that we can dance. We thank you for healing our voices that we can shout. We thank you for healing our bodies that we can run. Oh God, may this be a testimony. May we be a walking testimony, Father. Oh God, may people see the good works that you may get the glory. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Jesus. Have your way today, God. Have your way in your service, oh God. This is your service, Father God. We say thank you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Oh God, we call back our daughters. Those, oh God, who have backslid, Father. You are patient, Lord. You're patient. Hallelujah. You don't want any to perish, oh God, but you want us to come back to your sentence. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We call back our daughters. We claim we take back our daughters. We take back our sons, God. Those who have been drifting away from you. Oh God. You said if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Oh God. We pray, Lord, that they will come back to you. Oh God, that we will welcome them back with open arms, Lord. That we will not be, oh God, hardened towards them. That we will not be judgmental, but that we will love them and correct them. Oh God. And stand with them and groom them, Lord. To the man and woman that you want them to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can we just worship the Lord? Hallelujah. For just a few more minutes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We want him to have, oh God, full control of this service. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Flow through. Hallelujah. Every row. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to experience you again, oh God. We want to touch from you again. Just a touch, hallelujah, will make a difference, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your transformative power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. At this time, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to call up Sister Kathy just to read today's scripture, which is going to be taken from Psalm 84, beginning from verse 4 to end. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, today's scripture reading is taken from Psalms 84, and I'll be reading from verse 4 to 12. And it says, Blessed are they that dwell in the house, they will be still praising thee. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passeth through the valley of Baca, Make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O oh Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God of Jacob. Behold, O oh God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good, no good thing will be withhold from them that walk uprightly. O, bless, o Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusted in thee. Here end the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship the Lord in this house this morning. Lord, I worship you with all my heart, God. Lift up your hands and just say a few words to him this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus, you're worthy, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, you're worthy, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your love this morning, God. Thank you for bringing us into this new season, God. Thank you for keeping us in our families, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus.
Please join with us as we lift to our hand. All to Jesus, our soul.
today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the offering. Lord, we thank you for those who give. Give me those who don't have this morning, God, to give. Lord, I'm asking, Lord Jesus Christ, to provide for them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, bless us all. We sanctify, Lord God, to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah, just before we call the bishop to come, we're going to sing one more song this morning. Jesus, we're going to sing this as it's a new season, and it's a new day. A fresh anointing is coming my way. To my father's house, to my father's house. 
if you can employ some soups or something like that, just a little amen, advice for you. Sometimes uh, we don't do things right. The Bible said my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Amen. And so praise God, we can be doing things and not doing it the right way. And so we don't get the results that we see. So please, and when you fast, make sure you're in the Word. It's amazing. I was thinking this week that a lot of us would have, uh, before the pandemic, prayed and asked God, you know, I wish we could, you know, do some stuff because we have to work, we can't get to fast as much. And you know, the pandemic afforded many of us who had the chance to work from home. How many of you use that opportunity to pray as often as you could? Amen. Amen. How many of you grew in the Lord during that, during that season? Praise God. Some of us did, some of us didn't. And so I'm uh, encouraging those of you who are at home, praise God. Mark it some time. Walk around your, your room when you get a chance. Praise God. Because if you fast and don't read the word or pray, you're just going on a diet. Praise God. But if you pray, when you fast, what you're doing, you're replacing what you normally do with something for God. Are you with me, somebody? Amen. So for you to count, you got to make sure you get into the word and then you also pray. And then they join us on Tuesday for prayer, for Bible study, and Wednesday night for prayer. Amen. Did we were here yesterday in fasting? I'm going to encourage those of you who can and will. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Marnie to announce you. To join us next Saturday morning, this Saturday morning again, praise God, just for an hour at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 a.m. Saturday, we want to just come and pray in the sanctuary. Praise God. It's a benefit to be in the house of God. And the theme for this year is discovering the sanctuary of the Lord. So we're not only talking about the building, we're talking about your body, we're talking about different aspects. So stay tuned during the course of the year, the Lord says so. We'll be going more and more into that theme. Somebody say amen. amen. For the rest of this month, I'm encouraging everybody to read 1 Corinthians, 16 chapters. You've got 16 more days to go, and you can read a chapter a day. Let's do that as a body, as a church, so we can grow together. First Corinthians chapter, amen. First book of first Corinthians, you will be, amen, reading that for the rest of the month. Amen. Did you get all of those announcements? Fasting this week, prayer on Saturday morning, and the book of first Corinthians for the rest of the month. Praise God. I want to grow in the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to grow in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Last week we sang a chorus. I love it. It was on my heart all week. Um, all I want. Is that the one? Um, no, no, that's not the one. What's it called? Ain't nobody like you, Lord. Yeah, no one like you. Could you help me in that place? Okay. Mm -hmm.
eat that today. For tomorrow is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Let's go back to verse 26, verse 25, I beg your pardon. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord. Please speak to our hearts today as we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Please tell your neighbor beside you. Say, neighbor, it's not in the field. It's in the house. It's not in the field. It's in the house. It's not. Tomorrow in the United States, they, they are going to be observing uh, Martin Luther King Day. And many of you are familiar with uh, Martin Luther King, a Baptist preacher whose method of operation to break the slavery mentality that was pervading, especially the South in the United States. Um, his method was the violence. And of course, as a preacher, he was very, very good at um, oratory skills. And so uh, a lot of the uh, speeches that he gave are memorable today because they, they have the preacher, the preacher touch on it. Uh, one of the famous passages that he quoted and I learned that it was not something that was written down. It was impromptu. Um, is the I have a dream speech. But if you know it, um, shortly before he was assassinated, he uh, told the audience he was addressing that he had a dream. Not necessarily a, a slumber when you go to bed, but a vision, a, a something to look forward to that, that soon um, folks of his ethnicity would have the freedom that everybody else enjoy. And so as on the on the eve of that celebration tomorrow, I thought it fit to share with us uh, what it's like to be on a journey. Um, life is a journey, you know. Um, we don't get to where we want to get overnight. It takes time. It takes time. And um, Sometimes, if we're not careful, if we're not familiar with the journey of life, uh, we can get despondent. It is important that sometimes God pairs us, listen to me carefully, God pairs us with folks who have gone ahead of us. It is not strange that you have an old Elijah with a young Elisha. It's not strange that you have an old Abraham with a young Lot or an old Paul with a young Silas, or a old Moses with a young Joshua, or a woman with an issue of blood, amen, for 12 years with a, a young girl, Jarvis' daughter, who was only 12 years old. Um, it's not strange that the, 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 the apostles encouraged the churches to which they wrote, and they encouraged the old women and the older men to be mentors to the younger. Because as young folks, sometimes if we don't know the road, we get discouraged. But it's important that somebody who has been on the road, <laughs> amen, can tell us that this is normal, that it will work out. Somebody say amen. amen. And so life is like that. Um, I've said it before, and let me say it again, if you, or to visit anyone in the hospital and they're hooked up to a heart one and if, if the line is flat, they're out of here, they're done, they're, they're gone. But if there is, there is some movement, if, if, there is, if there's undulating swings, ups and downs, if there are eggs and flows, they are still around. And life is like that, sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. But tell somebody this year, it's just life. Come on, let them hear you say it's just life. Um, um, in, in life, we, we have our ways, but God's ways are not our ways. 
in life we have the good on one side and the bad on the other side. We have the accomplishments on one side and the failures on the other side. We have the successes on one side and the disappointments on the other side. But in the kingdom of God, God says, count it all joy. Because without the negatives, the positives can't make any sense. Can I get a witness here somebody? Praise God. There's a scripture in Romans, I think it's Romans 8, 28. says, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. To those who are called according to his purpose. Can you say that to that? And so life, as troublesome as it may be, and I won't be long, it's, it's brief. When you go to the cemetery, um, you know what I mean by cemetery, right? Yes, yes, things change these days, you have to make sure. When I was younger, it used to be called graveyard. <laughs> I think they call it memorial garden now. So when you go to these cemeteries, they, they used to have tombstones. I don't even know if they have these little, little plaques now that because they want everything to look green and lovely. But when you go there, you will see on these plaques or tombstones or epitaphs, what do you call them? Um, the, the, the range of life that somebody lived. You see the date they were hatched and the date they were dispatched. And between those two dates, there is a dash, a small hyphen. Life is like that. It's just a a dash. Amen. Job, Job, in Job chapter number, and I don't have this written down, so let me find it. Job chapter number 7 and verse 6. If you don't mind, go on your app and help me. Amen. With that scripture. Job chapter number 7 and verse 6. Job says, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and are spent with a Life is brief. And so I encourage those of you, whatever you've got to do, do it now. If you got to apologize, apologize now. If, if you got to tell somebody you love them, tell them now. If, if you need to go back to school, go back to school now. And whatever you need to do, because life is swift. That's what Joe said. Now let's hear what the psalmist says. Psalm, Sister Kathy, I talked about going in this morning. Psalm 89. Verse number 47 said, Remember how short my time is. Why hast thou made all men in vain? My your time is like is brief. But as brief as it is, it's filled with trouble. Trouble. And that's just life. Let me hurry on. The children of Israel had spent a whole 400 years plus in Egypt. Imagine that. People born, people died in slavery, not ever knowing what freedom is like. And so having spent that amount of time in a system, it becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of you. And so God had a little difficulty, if I may put it in human terms, trying to change their mentality because they were used to a certain lifestyle. Praise God. They were used to slavery. And as much as it was arduous and, and rigor, rigorous, they had food. And food is essential. You take away a man's food, amen, you're in trouble. Praise God. Because no matter how tough life is, if a man has food, he's all right. Food is essential. No wonder the enemy used food, praise God, to tempt eating was food. He offered her a, a, a fruit. Amen. As, as forbidden as it was, it was still food. The Bible says when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and was pleasant to the eyes, of course, and looked good and was desirous to make one wise, she took the fruit and, and she ate it. But it was food nonetheless. Praise God. Esau came in from the hunt and didn't catch anything and, and was famished. And, 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 and Jacob made him a deal. Say, if you, if you 
give me your birthright and I'll, I'll give you some of this food. It was, it was food that, that Jesus was first tempted with. Having fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Food is essential. Somebody say amen. Amen. And when you're really hungry, you don't matter what kind of food it is. But my daddy used to say, I didn't know what he meant when, he was, when I was younger. He said, when rata belly, when rata belly full, it's a pity to ask him. <laughs> it means, you know, when you plant things in the field um, and the rats go and eat it, as long as they are hungry, they will eat the vine, they will eat anything, amen, whether it's ripe or not. But when, when they are satisfied, that's when they start to find fault. When, when, when rats are belly full, it's a potato asking. Amen. Potato means potato. Look at you. Praise God. Amen. And so in his way, he was, you know, we are, we are like that. As long as we need something, we don't matter what it is. You know, when, when food is scarce, somebody will go in the store and they will see the last, amen, cantaloupe or the last bird fruit that everybody feel up like this in market and leave. It doesn't matter what it is. They'll still take it because they are desperate. It's the last one, but at least they get one. But when there is an abundance, they'll pick and choose what they want. And you know what I'm talking about? Because when life is like that, when you get to a point where you are desperate. And so when, when they were in Israel, when they were in Pharaoh's land, when they were in Egypt, they had everything to their make and call. As much as it was slavery, they had food. And with food, they were comforted. And so there comes a time, though, when when God raised up somebody called Moses. It's amazing. God raised up somebody whose name meant to be drawn out of the water. And God led him in a place where there was no water. God led him to a place that was wilderness terrain. But Moses is from a tribe called Levi. We don't hear too much negativity about Levi because they were worshipers. The Levites were the ones that were given the charge of the tabernacle. But let me tell you, don't play with the Levites. Praise God. When Leah, those were one of Leah's sons, Levi and Simeon, they don't play. As a matter of fact, amen. And those of you who remember the story of Dinah, amen. Leah had a girl child named Dinah. Praise God. Dinah wandered over into the land of Shechem and was molested. She was raped, amen, by Shechem. And the Bible says, even though the young man raped her, he fell in love with her. It's a bad story, but you need to check it out. Amen. He fell in love with her and wanted to marry her. And so his father, Hamor, came and met with Jacob and said, all right, you know, we are men, we are big men. Let's see if we can work it out. I know my son messed up, but, but let's see if we can work it out. Anybody ever know what I'm talking about? Have your children ever done something where the parents have to sit down and solve things out? And so these two grown men were trying to work things out. And so they, then all of a sudden, the two boys spoke up, Simeon and Levi, and said, we have a plan. If you guys circumcise, amen, and, then, and be like us, then you can have our daughters and you will have your sons. I warn you on Tuesday night that God don't play that. God don't play that. Certain things that are for the church, you can't just send it over into the world. These men had no relationship with God. So there is no covenant that could be cut with them and God because they were not God's people. Somebody say amen. Be very careful when you get your advice. There are a whole lot of people. There are blogs and vlogs and vlogs and posts and podcasts and, 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 and all kinds of stuff out there giving the saints advice. But you need to know where you get your advice because you need to follow what God says. Not what somebody thinks, not what the professor wrote, but what the word of God says. Somebody say amen to that. And so they, they told the man, if you did that, praise God, we would, we would you know, hand our girls over to you and vice versa. And you know, the Bible says, when the men were sore, three days they were sore, after they obeyed the, the, the advice of Simeon and Levi, the Bible says that these two young men went there with their swords and they killed all the males. Praise God. They were vicious. They didn't play around. They stayed to support it. All the males and they took all their possessions. Praise God. So much so that Jacob, their daddy, was afraid. 
Jacob said, you have caused me to be, to, to, be, to stink, that's the term he used, among all the enemies. Jacob was concerned that the, 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 the neighboring people would amen, conspire and group together and fight against him. But God protected him. But you know what happened? On his deathbed, Jacob didn't even forget it. Jacob says, you guys are instruments of cruelty. Read it for yourself. Amen. In Genesis 49, he says, you are instruments of cruelty. Praise God. You, have, you, you, you are. You, you can't be trusted. Praise God. At a time when they wanted a blessing from their father, what he pronounced upon them didn't sound like a blessing. He said, you are instrument of cruelty. He said, nobody should come near your tent because you can't be trusted. Praise God. But it's out of this tribe. God has a way. I feel like helping somebody here today. God has a way. Praise God. I've given you another opportunity to receive something from him. Whatever was against you, Brother Robert, whatever was working for you in the past, God will use the very thing and turn it around for you and make you a blessing. Somebody say amen to that. Who would imagine that the same anger that was spent up in the lineage of Simeon and Levi, that God will use the same anger and turn it into, amen, a worship environment for him. Let me tell you this, praise God. Some of you don't know this, but passion is passion. It's, it, 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 it depends on where it's directed. If the David was a worshiper, his passion was to God. But when David's passion was towards women, he became an idolater. Some of you, what you've got, you've got to make sure you give it direction. Because without direction, you don't know what will happen to that particular gift that God has given to you. Amen. If you can sing, it depends on which song you sing and who you sing to. Praise God. But singing is singing. Are you with me, somebody? So your passion, amen, if you're passionate, you've got to make sure that that passion is driven towards God. And so God used that same, same, that same vice that they had in their lineage and said, I need people who would worship me like that. Amen. Worshippers, you are warriors. I want to let you hear that. Worshippers are warriors. When you worship, God puts your hands in the necks of your enemies. Don't treat your hallelujah, amen, like it's just nothing. When you say hallelujah, you're waging war. Don't you know that the enemy can't fight you when you're a worshiper? Praise God. Paul and Silas were, were in jail. Praise God. And could not get out. They didn't have the key. Praise God. They didn't know the warder. They couldn't bribe anybody. But at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and said praise unto God and there was an earthquake and God delivered them by his great power. Let me tell you again in case you didn't hear me the first two times. Praise God. Your worship is powerful. Your worship is not to be taken in vain. That is why the enemy, thank you Lord, that is why the enemy is fishing around the church. Hear me Sister Tassie, hear me Sister Kayla. The enemy is fishing around the church trying to find folks. Praise God. He can move from the sanctuary, praise God, into the, amen, into the industry. Are you with me, somebody? I'm not saying you can't make money off your gift, but you got to be careful that you still sing for God. You can't be praying for Jay-Z all week and then show up in church on Sunday morning and say you want to praise TV. The devil is a liar. Can I get a witness here? If you're going to shout on the walls of Jericho, amen, on the seventh day, you have to be walking around the walls every day of the week. Somebody say amen to that. We've got far too many artists out there. And I know what I'm saying because you see them online. You see them on social media. They are in bed with the enemy. Praise God. That's why the church, they, their church, has no power. But I'm telling chosen, if we are for God, we are for God every day of the week. Somebody say amen to that. Praise God. We sing the songs of time. We give God praise. So when we lift our hands in the sanctuary, we, we are taking off Authority. Somebody say amen. Amen. Lord help me. I remember when we first got this building. When we first got it, it was so hard in here. You could hardly come. It was it was like pressure. When you come by here, you feel so drained. But praise God, we had a, a 30 days of praise. Amen. Every 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 30 minutes, every every day at six o'clock for half an hour. Somebody was in the building giving God praise. And little by little, the praise changed the atmosphere. I don't know if you realize, but we had some good move of God in this church that we have never had before. Because there is a place of worship in where God's presence can be a man settled in. Can I get a witness here? 
Your praise is powerful. Amen. God will give you a song. See, like I'm stuck there, but let me talk for a while. God will give you a song in the night season. Praise God. When, when your tongues can't do it. Praise God. When the preaching will work, I worship and help you. Lord, I feel help in the air. When Saul was troubled with an evil spirit from the Lord, he was tormented. Praise God. He couldn't sleep. Praise God. Hallelujah. He was tormented. Guess what happened? They found somebody, Brother Robert, in the kingdom. His name was David. And all David did was worship. And as he worshiped, they saw that peace. Listen to me, somebody. It doesn't matter whether you're on key or off key. For me, it does matter if you're on the mic. But when you're at home, you don't have to be on key. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Whatever it takes, open up your mouth while you're in the house. And say, Lord, I thank you. Come on your song. Sing your chorus. And give the Lord the praise. Because when you create an environment of worship, the devil can't penetrate that. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So, amen, I just thought I'd leave that with you. Amen, God, God raised up somebody called Moses out of the same tribe to lead the children of Israel, amen, out of bondage. Amen, give me 10 more minutes. And the Bible says, as they left, amen, they were, they were happy. In chapter 15, praise God, they had the first choir. Praise the Lord, as they walked through, Miriam got the timbrels and she got the ladies together. She said, let us sing. This was Moses' first song. He wrote two songs. One of them didn't make the, the chart, but one of them, Psalm 15, Moses, Moses wrote his first song. He said, amen, though our glory is so God, who is like unto thee, awesome in praise, doing wonders. Amen. He wrote his first song. Miriam got the first choir together. Brother Robert, they were happy and joyous. And life is like that. Life is like the beach. Praise God. Everybody know the beach? You go to the beach, you're playing the sand. Uh, praise God, you're under shallows. Uh, you make shed sand castles. Uh, you have a good time. The water rushes up and down, it's a glory. But as you go out into the deep, uh, life is like that. Uh, it gets turbulent out there. You start to feel the waves a little more. You can't find your footing. And I want to tell you, listen to me carefully, that's life. You don't get to run back to the shore every time things get rough. I want to talk to some of you because you think your marriage isn't working. It's just life, honey. Amen. The days of you holding hands and, and falling asleep on the floor, those days are on the shore. They are the shadows. As you get out in life and it gets to the deep, things will happen. Praise God. And I need to tell you that because a whole lot of people, when you get into the middle of your situation, in the middle of your relationship, and in the middle of your storm, you want to give up, but you don't get to quit. Life is like that. And I noticed something with the children of Israel. This is what the Lord told me to tell you. I noticed something with the children of Israel. Every time they come upon an, uh, an obstacle, Sister Alicia, they murmur. They murmured. Chapter 15, they, they, they left Egypt and, and they, they got thirsty, but remember, and they murmured. The same energy that was used to murmur could have been used to pray. The same energy that was used to complain could have been used to, God was trying to teach him something. God is saying when you are in slavery, what you got was automatic. They told him when to get up. They told him when to eat. They told him when lights out. They told him when it's dinner time. That you, you were on automatic pilot. But now you're in a free environment. Whatever you need, just ask. I'll be the Holy Ghost. I need to talk to some of you because your mouth is canceling your blessing. Amen. Every time you open up your mouth, it's a complaint. Do not go on for me. Why is it my life like this? But God is saying, stop complaining. Whenever you have a need, I need to show you what you need. Whenever you come up to somewhere where you lack something, just ask. Because I'm the God who can supply all your needs according to your riches in glory. God says when you complain, you're not complaining. This is how you when you fight. You're not fighting against what you see. We wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Even the person who cut their eye at you, praise God, is not really there. There's a spirit that motivated that amen, that behavior. When somebody amen, take your name to the gossip mill, it's not all they're just using their mouth, but there is a spirit that inspired them to do that kind of thing. Somebody say amen. So the same time. 
happen. You'll burn out. You're not murmuring against the leaders. You're not murmuring against who you see. You're murmuring against God. But that was their mentality. They murmured because they did not know how to ask. And so in chapter 15, Brother Robert, they wanted water and they murmured. And God told Moses, and Moses, amen, that most of your rendition says a tree, but if you read some of other translations, they say God showed Moses a piece of wood. So that across to me. And, and when, they, when he threw it into the water, the bitter water was made sweet. And God, in verse 26 of chapter 15, God made a covenant with them. He said, if you do my commandments, I will put none of these diseases that I put upon the Egyptian because I am the Lord that healed thee. That's, that's chapter 15. They wanted water and the Lord provided. That's chapter 15. But now we come to chapter 16. And they wanted food. Now, and guess what? They murmur again. God just showed them that if you just ask me, I can give it to you. But now they wanted food. And the Bible said, look at verse number one. That's the 15th year of the second month, so like today's day, almost. But, but the Bible says they, 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 they wanted food again. And they, Brother Josiah, they murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the Bible says that, that, that Moses and Aaron, God said, don't worry about it. I'm going to give them flesh in the night. God caused birds to just circle in, amen, in the evening so they could have enough meat to eat. And in the morning when they looked out the wilderness, I'm almost done, when they looked out the wilderness, the Bible said they saw a frost. The wilderness is like that. Desert, listen to me, deserts are not always on the equator as you think. They're usually further north or further south. So in the daytime, it's really hot when the sun is up. But at nighttime, it gets really cool. That's life. Uh, amen. There's, there's a fluctuation in the temperature. That's life. Uh, hallelujah. In the daytime, it's uh, the sun. The Bible says that God sent them, I think it's chapter 13, 21. I could be wrong. But God sent them a pillar of cloud by day. Amen. To give them shade and a, and a pillar of fire by night. To give them heat. Because at nighttime was cold. And then, oh my God. Can I just pause to say, God, amen, will take care of you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I, let me just say to somebody, God will take care of you. Amen, listen to me. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God will take care of you. He knows just what you need. Hallelujah. He knows when to say what you need. He knows how to provide what you need. Help me somebody. I wish I had an old folk in here who would help me say, be not dismayed. What? We can tell a neighbor, say, neighbor, God will. Huh? He will take care of you. Huh? He will take care of you. Sister Elaine, he will take care of you. Hallelujah. Lady C, he will take care of you. He knows what to say when you need it. Huh? He'll take care of you. Yeah. 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 I am God from glory. Amen. The Bible said he provided for them and they, they murmured. And God said, when, when you look up in the morning, I'm going to have something fresh on ice. It won't stale. It won't dry out. By the time you get it, it will be cool. It will be fresh. Oh, that person. It's like coming out of the refrigerator. God sent them what they call manna. Manna is Hebrew because it means that, that what they say. Hebrew, they, to, to say, what is this? They say manna. That's what you say, what is this in Hebrew? In other words, they didn't know what it is. They call it manna. The Moses says in chapter 16, he says, this is the bread. God, God tell the angels, you, you eat too much. God took some of the food off the, the angels' table and said, I've got some people. God fed them with, with angels' food. God sent food from heaven, for bread from heaven, hear me? Bread from heaven and fed them. Amen. In the morning and flesh in the evening. They, they were walking during the day, so so when they when they docked, when they, when they when they pitched their tent, they had food ready. Lord have mercy, and they had they had bread in the morning. I wish somebody would hear me. It, it sounds to me like you should eat bread at night, but but this is what this is what the Bible is saying to me. They had bread in the morning and flesh in the evening, 
And God also, here's what happened also, my brother. God had a rock falling in. You know when water comes out of a rock, it's cool. Those of you who have been to those I've been there one time, I won't go back. Praise God, the water cold, cold. Praise God. When it comes out of a rock, praise God. It's God had, amen, a water faucet. Following them during the wilderness. When they were hot, they had cool water to drink. But they murmured against Moses. Moses said, you're not murmuring against me. It's like when Israel wanted a king. Samuel says, amen, you don't reject me, you're, you're rejecting God. And so they murmured against Moses. And God said, watch this, bread from heaven. Now, it came in conditions. I'm almost done. It came in conditions. He says, when you go out, just speak up enough for the day. Yes, sir. Give us this day of our daily bread. He said, make sure you have enough. If you leave anything for the next day, it's all spoil, it's all smell, and worms will take it up. Guess what happened? They, they didn't believe. They did what they did, and the next day, it's time to hide them. And worms. And Moses said, when you guys, you still not trusting God. But then the scripture we read from our text. He says, even though you are forbidden to leave anything over on during the week, on the sixth day, make sure you collect twice as much one rubber because the Sabbath day God won't say nothing. I want to tell somebody today that that church nowadays we are in the sixth day. You know the sixth day is the day of man. Man and bees. That's why the mark of the bees is 666. Six, six. And when I say 666, six, six, I'm not teaching that today, but when I say 666, six, six, a lot of people try to find a day what the 666 six, six means. It just means three times the level of man. In Isaiah chapter 6, the angel cried, Holy, holy, holy. Praise God. So 666 six, six means that there is going to be a concentration of men's activity. And when men start to be in charge, it may things get tight. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the sixth day of life. Let me tell you, we are in the sixth day of life. What, 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 one, two, two minute prayer used to work, amen, back in the day. You have to pray twice as hard. Amen. When you used to fast half a day, back in the day, you have to fast, fast twice as hard because we're in the sixth day. Praise God, where things are tighter. But the Bible says, when they obey God, amen, the, the meal didn't stink, it didn't become odious, and there was no worms in it. And Moses says, amen, you got to cut it twice as much today because today you will not find it in the field. God have mercy. I want to tell somebody that the world is looking for an answer out there in the field. It was in the field that Cain killed Abel. It was in the field that the enemy had his way. But let me tell you, whatever you're looking for in this life today, you will not find it in the field, but you will find it in the house. Somebody say hallelujah. David said, I don't know who it is. Somebody quoted today. Amen. Maybe Sister Tanya. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of, of the Lord. Somebody say amen to that. I'm almost done. Let me preach to you for a while. The world is looking for joy. But you need to tell somebody, you won't find joy out in the world. But you can find joy in the house of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise God. The world is looking for peace. But you won't find peace in and out there is war. War in the east, war in the west, war up north, and war down south. Everywhere is war, but in the house of God, there is peace. Lord, somebody say hallelujah. I don't care what you leave your house tormented with. There is a presence in the house. When you walk into the church, something comes over you. You feel comfortable. You feel like nothing is wrong because there is peace in the house. Somebody say hallelujah. Let me tell you something more. There is provision in the house. I prophesy to somebody today. I don't know what you're lacking in life. Lord told me to tell somebody that he's making provisions for you right now. You don't know where it's coming from, but the fact that you're in the house, God told me to tell somebody that there is provision. He's going to appear a table before you in the presence of your enemy. They're going to think that you're stealing love on the side. They're going to say she must have a man somewhere. 
please touch somebody. Do that I will with my body. Then open your body to somebody and say, God is a ready-made provision. Uh, I say, God, I don't say me. My provision is limited. I say, God. Somebody help me say, God. Sister Molly, thank you. I say, God. I say, God, Sister Eugenie, God has already made provision. You're looking for a scholarship, God has already made provision. Hallelujah. God, we you take two people and tell them, God, just touch somebody and say, God has already made provision. Yes, Sister Alicia, God, Sister Kathy, God, Sister Pisa God. I say, God, hallelujah. I feel happy. I say, God, Provision, God be provision, God sort out the mortgage, God prepare the husband, God prepare the wife, God prepare the child. I said, God, I said, God, somebody help me say, God, say, God. Somebody will hear me. 
you need to remember who your father is. Tell somebody one last time. You will not find it in the field, but you will find it in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to wrap this sermon up. But when you push yourself off, get about the armpit and say, I'm going back to my father's house. Hallelujah. He may not receive me as a son, but even if I'm a servant, the servants have bred enough atmosphere. Why should I perish here in hunger? Let me tell somebody, get up from where you are. There is more in store for you. Sister Gloria, are you hearing me? Is there anybody else hearing me this morning? I said, get up from where you are. The Lord is calling us to a higher level. Church, get up. From where you are, hallelujah, you've been squattering down in the squatter for far too long. But the Lord is calling us, Zion is calling us to a higher place of praise, a higher level of worship, a higher adventure, a fresh anointing. Somebody say, Hallelujah, you won't find it in the field. Amen. Queen B can't help you, Jay Z can't help you, Hallelujah, Shaggy can't help you. But they can't help you. You need to find God because He's your help. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which coming my help. My help coming from the Lord. Today you won't find it in the field. Everybody stand up and please. Let me let you go. Thank you. My God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. This is what I mean. The Lord told me to tell somebody just now, he said, pick up twice as much. I don't know what kind of week you had last week, but today, before you leave service today, give me two more minutes. The Lord told me to tell somebody, pick up twice as much. Because you're about to get into something that the enemy is trying to keep you out of. Pick up twice as much. That's why I didn't need a praise team for a few moments to see if we could get some more worship on them because what we need is not in the field. Hallelujah. What we need is in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, woman. Woman had 10 pieces of coin and she lost one. But the Bible says she swept the house diligently to see if she... <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody, sweep, sweep to their friends. Yes, Lord. Sleep till you, till you find it. Something you lost, it's in the house. Your joy is in the house. Amen. Your anger, what made your anger happen in the house? It's here, you gotta come back to get it. Hallelujah. Your peace is in the house. You need to share this, this sermon with somebody today. Let them know, whatever you need, thank God. It's not in the field. It's not in the field. It's in the house. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I want to pray with somebody today. Don't let me stay too long. Come on quickly. Let me just lay hands on you. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. That God will give you a double portion. Hallelujah. That God will give you double for your trouble. Hallelujah. That God will pour out His Spirit upon you. You won't find it in the field. Glory be to God. It's not at work. It's not in the office. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's in the house. Can you raise your hands where you are? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stand before you right now. I'm about to lay hands on the people who have come forward. Oh, my God. Lord, I pray today. Lord, as I trust them. 
Hallelujah. That the double portion of your spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, that double unction. Hallelujah. That birthright anointing. Hallelujah. We fall upon them, Jesus. Glory be to God. I pray today that whatever they need, hallelujah, Lord God, that you supply as they make their way back home today. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, a God that need will be met. Hallelujah. Lord, we cancel every debt in the name of Jesus Christ. 